Can a single AI learn every track in Mario Kart with the hardest possible settings? In this video, I'm going to reveal what three weeks of AI training amounts to, as well as the simple tricks that most people never use when making AI. I'm a professional AI researcher and have spent more time creating Mario Kart AI than most people have even spent playing Mario Kart. So here is what I've learned after years of research. Start the training. The only information this AI is given is the screen and a reward telling it if it's doing good or bad. After observing the screen and the reward, the AI can use its pattern recognition abilities to learn which screens lead to which rewards. The AI then has to decide which action it will take to give it the most reward. This process is then repeated millions of times, with the AI's ability to choose actions improving at every single iteration. After just an hour of performing these iterations, the AI is already starting to learn general patterns, like driving forward and avoiding some of the walls. However, to learn every single track, it's gonna take a lot longer than just one hour. The engine behind this pattern learning machine is an algorithm called Beyond the Rainbow, implementing some of the most advanced ways to extract information from images and learning how to relate this information to the rewards. But the hardest part of building this AI was actually selecting when and what to give it rewards for. These rewards are what guides the AI's behavior, so it's critical to push the AI's learning in the right direction. The main thing I gave my AI rewards for was hitting checkpoints. On every lap of the track, I made 200 checkpoints, giving the AI constant validation for going in the right direction. But I didn't just give it the same reward for every checkpoint, but rather the faster it hit a checkpoint, the more reward it got, encouraging it to be as fast as possible. There is one little trick I use to make this AI learn extra fast. If you're trying to learn to drive, but you spend all your time just driving into walls, you're probably not going to learn very fast. Instead, it's much better to simply start from the beginning of another track after getting in a bad situation. To implement this, every time the AI goes off-road, hits a wall, or stops moving, we just send it to a random location, allowing it to start moving again. There is actually a subtle problem with this method though. Imagine if every time you crashed, you got sent to a random location, which could be easy or hard. If it takes me three minutes to crash in the easy location and just 10 seconds to crash in the hard location, what will end up happening is I'll spend much more time in locations which I'm good at, allowing me to stay in my comfort zone. This is really not ideal for learning. We can easily remedy this though, by keeping a counter of how long we've spent on every track and whenever we crash, we just go back to the track that we spent the least time on, making sure we spend time on what we're bad at. All this getting the AI to drive is great and all, but it doesn't actually reward the AI for the one thing we want it to do, win. So for that, we need to give the AI a huge reward for finishing, and an even bigger reward for finishing in those higher positions. There are a couple more tricks I used for rewarding the AI, which I'll reveal later in the video, but I think it's about time we unleash this thing to do some training. After just a single hour of training, the AI has already learnt the general pattern that it needs to try and stay on the road to avoid dying, and can even make it almost halfway around Luigi's circuit. Despite this, the AI has some major insufficiencies. When humans are about to meet their fate, we are generally very aware of it, whereas even when this AI is going off course and having an affair with a cow, its reward predictions tell us it still thinks it's doing pretty good, which isn't what we want. Lastly, the AI just got absolutely bodied by the CPUs at the start of each track, getting shoved around all over the place, so clearly the AI has some work to do on learning how to defend itself. Skipping forward to around 8 hours of training, and the CPUs are showing no mercy, really giving the AI the business. But aside from getting cyberbullied, this AI has certainly improved its abilities to avoid walls and stay on the road, maybe even a little too much at times. Most importantly though, the AI learned what all bad human players learn. The bullet bill in this game is stupidly broken and can get you out of basically any situation, leading the AI to almost complete its first lap. This feat wouldn't be far away though, as by 24 hours, the AI was easily managing laps of some of the shorter and less complex tracks like Ghost Valley, even if the driving was still rather messy. Remember earlier when I mentioned there were a few more tips I hadn't shared yet? Well, one of them worked pretty well, but actually became a bit of an issue. We all know that going off-road is bad, so I gave the AI a small penalty for touching the off-road. On some of the stranger tracks though, like Shy Guy Beach, you pretty much can't avoid driving through off-road. This led to the AI actually trying to get mushrooms so that it could avoid the off-road penalty when going over water, which is actually kind of smart. The AI had even managed to almost complete its first track, being mere seconds away from finishing Luigi's circuit, only to die by doing none other 
than attempting to take a shortcut. After three entire days of training, the AI is really starting to look like a force to be reckoned with, even giving some of the tougher tracks a respectable attempt. The AI did however still have some failure cases, such as pre-aligning itself for jumps. The AI had mostly mastered standard land-based driving by this point, rarely being tripped up by ordinary things. The only sections that AI still seemed to struggle with were really tight and unexpected corners that again required a bit of pre-alignment to make. None of these issues, however, were anything close in comparison to the AI's enemy number one. You know them, you probably don't really care about them. I'm talking about bloopers. The AI's ability to understand images is certainly much more sensitive to interruptions than a human would be, leading to bloopers massively confusing the AI. My hope was that the AI would get bloopered enough to become robust to this, but only more time will tell. Anyway, I know what you're all here to see, so it's about time we see how many of the 32 tracks the AI was able to complete after the full three weeks of training. Throughout the three weeks, the AI continually improved, gradually improving its ability to deal with things such as bloopers. What the AI struggled with was certainly the chaos of items. If left alone, the AI was generally fine, but struggled when items caused it to need to really adapt. One strange quirk of the AI was that it often generalized to new tracks so well that if it accidentally turned around, it would often just start successfully driving in the wrong direction, which was quite unexpected to say the least. The thing that really blew me away from this video is that even after three weeks of training, like that's a crazy amount of time, it was still improving and getting better, with no signs of actually hitting a plateau. It really makes me wonder, if I'd have left this running for say a month, two months, how much better would it actually actually would have gone. You can also see three different jumps on the graph. These were a result of some minor changes I made during the training. My technique of resetting the AI after going too slowly worked well in most cases, but sometimes it was actually really unfair on the AI, especially when getting hit by items such as bullets and blue shells, which caused the AI to stay still for a while. The jumps were a result of me taking the reset threshold and making it slightly more lenient, trusting the AI more and more to recover from bad situations. Sadly, I could I couldn't record the entire three week learning process since it was too long, but I will share a couple of my favourite moments I happened to catch a glimpse of while the AI was training. Firstly, remember how the AI didn't like bloopers? Well I saw the AI implement a crazy strategy that most people in Mario Kart don't even know about. Did you know you can actually remove a blooper in Mario Kart by using a mushroom? I didn't, but the AI definitely did, as multiple times I would see the AI hold a mushroom in first place and then use it to remove the blooper when it was here, showing that the AI did actually do some level of long-term planning and understood its own weaknesses, which just blew my mind. A second cool thing I saw was actually quite a bit earlier in the training process. On a track called Mushroom Gorge, there's a crazy difficult shortcut called the Gap Jump, and the AI actually attempted this shortcut and came kind of close. Even though it didn't make it, it was wild to me that the AI even attempted to fling itself across a massive chasm in an attempt to finish a little faster. Before I reviewed reveal the final graph showing the reward for every single track, I want to kindly say that this video took me a really, really long time to make. So if you could support my channel and research by liking, subscribing and leaving a comment, that would really mean a lot to me. So here is the individual progress of the AI on each and every track, showing the number of checkpoints here against the number of episodes played on that track. Since there were 200 checkpoints per lap, an average of 200 means finishing on average one lap. What this really showed me was that items and the pure chaos of Mario Kart was what the AI struggled with the most. Given that the AI could achieve more than 200 checkpoints in most races, it meant the track itself wasn't really the issue, but simply learning to deal with obscure situations was the key thing the AI was yet to learn. Sadly, there were a couple of tracks that the AI was never able to conquer. Surprise, surprise, Rainbow Road and Bowser's Castle were the tracks which the AI actually really struggled with, likely just due to being longer, more complex, complicated and just more unique than the rest of the tracks. As with the graph of all the tracks though, it's amazing to see how many tracks the AI was still improving at, even after a total of three weeks of non-stop training. Thank you guys so much for watching, but how well could this AI have done if it was just playing a single track? Click on this video to find out. See you there.